Hey guys, Blitzen suggested that maybe I make something um, related to electronics or um, electrical troubleshooting for you guys. So he's right, as always, and um, <clears throat> wanted to make a video about um, my one year annual with, with Jed. But uh, no, I'm not going to do that. But my trouble with Jed began I know I knew I was having trouble when I installed that voltmeter on them and don't worry the hood closes and you know what I mean I'm not drilling any holes <clears throat> for any you purist freaks <laughs> I better make this a nice video lest I get another dislike the one to, they're usually understandable you know what I mean like if I start, it's a ham radio channel, if I start suggesting that uh, I do a Pirates on the Air video in the ham bands, what do you think people are going to do? <laughs> oh, it's a grin, man. It's beautiful. And so I noticed a problem. I'll stand here. When I first installed that voltmeter, um, Jed was still running fine. <clears throat> but he did something odd once in a great while. He did it again after I installed that. And I go to turn the key, and then everything's fine. I go to start it, and I get a loud clunk. And um, typically that can indicate a bad, um, on a car, a bad solenoid, if it's a, a Bendix-style starter. Um, but that's not what was happening here. When it would clunk, things would dim down. So I knew I had some resistance somewhere in this thing. And then I noticed, wow, I put, and then that was happening. Then I put the voltmeter on, and I would turn the key to the on position. And even with a fully charged battery sitting there at about 12.8 volts, the voltmeter was displaying about 12.0 to 12.1. There is almost eight tenths of a volt being dropped somewhere, and that's with almost no current draw. I knew I had a bad connection somewhere, and um, I'm gonna go get the tripod. Uh, n no, I'm not either. I'm just gonna pause you, and I want to show you what I found. Hang on. Okay, this might get a little shaky because I'm holding you with one hand, and I'm old. <laughs> I knew this electrical connector was melted. I saw that last year because it's, you know, it's visible when you open the hood if you look close. Um, and I look, if you look closely, Jesus, my hand hit the stop button. Now I've got to edit this. Um, the question is, what melted it? Engine heat or um, electrical heat because of a bad connection? And if you look, those connectors, the connectors themselves are fine. Just the housing melted. So I had to assume it was from engine heat. I rerouted the wiring in a better fashion and, and enclosed it in that um, loom, that wire loom. Um, okay, so that wasn't the problem. That connection's fine. I'm going to pause you and reposition you and show you another connector. Okay, I'm not going to tell you yet what the problem is that I found um, because it would no longer start. It would no longer do anything. I turned the key on, and there was nothing. Did some troubleshooting. I took this panel off after I found out what the problem was. Look at this connector. I don't know if you can even see that, man. Look at that thing, man. It's falling apart. Um, I can t grab it with my hand and crack pieces of plastic off. So that told me one thing, the plastic is way too brittle. This is in the cooler compartment of the tractor. Nothing under here gets re really that hot. But it's a 31 year old tractor and that connector has uh, fallen apart. Um, if you look at the wires though and the crimps, they're fine. Zero sign of heat damage. So. That's an electrical sound connection right now, a mechanically poor connection. It's a weird connector. It's, I guarantee you it's either made by Amp or Amphenol or uh, Molex, right? Now, 
I'm going to stand back up. I pause. I pause you. I should tell you sometime why I use that voice. It's my old friend, co-worker, Philippe. He's a, I got a good story about him. Anyway, what you're looking at there, center screen, is a uh, 25 amp self-automatically -re resetting circuit breaker. And uh, I also knew that was rusty. Saw that last year after I bought it. I looked this thing over with a fine tooth comb, man. Then I started cleaning it and taking it apart, right? Not the problem. The problem was, you probably already know, it's the ignition switch, okay? And so enough of this tractor, I'm going to pause you again and bring you back and show you an electrical diagram that I drew up for you. Give you a quick lesson and a couple of hints in electrical troubleshooting if it's new to you. Hang on. Whoops, I'm sorry. I pause you. Man, Blitzy hates it when I start doing my YouTuber voice. You know, I don't know why. Because he's not used to it. It's me. I'm not like trying to pretend I'm someone I'm not. I'm just be acting like myself. But he doesn't hear me talking like this too much because I live alone. Okay, check it out, man. Isn't he handsome? Do you notice any difference? Do you like his beard? <laughs> what an asshole. Oh, oh I'm, whoops. This is a no cuss Tuesday. Okay, guys, I'll be serious. Because I don't know how much some of you or most of you know about electrical troubleshooting. Very basic electrical theory. Um, so, like, most of the hams are, if, I would dare to say most hams are appliance operators, and that's not a disparaging thing to say. You think I'm not an appliance operator? You think I understand everything I use in our modern world? <laughs> Dream on, Charlie. Okay. Whew. I, I I run out of I run out of gas while ba after all my babbling. Okay, so I found the problem to be the the key switch. Okay, and what I want to do is talk to you guys about um, voltage drop and 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 what I found when I turned the key on and saw uh, a reading on the voltmeter that was 0.8 volts below the battery voltage. I knew there was something wrong. The voltage is being dropped somewhere, and in this case, it was being dropped across the contacts of the key switch. And I'd like to I'd like to show you guys something. Um, the voltage drop across that contact is equal to its Ohm's law. It's equal to the current times the resistance. And boy, you think a half an ohm isn't very much resistance, is it? Well, let's look and see. When I turn the key on and um, see a voltage drop like that, eight tenths of a volt, what if, you know, with the key turned on but nothing running, what if there is one amp of current being drawn? You'll notice one thing on this key switch. It's in series with the battery and it feeds everything else through two different fuses, a 3 amp and a 20 amp fuse. The only thing, the only time that there's current flow through in the tractor um, that's not going through here is when you're start when the starter's engaged and it's cranking. In which case these stay hot, they stay active. Okay, this is just a representation of my voltmeter. In my case, I had it tied in to the three amp fuse line, but it's it wouldn't have mattered. It would have read the same same in the, either case. Okay, so let's again over here. If it's drawing one amp with the key turned on and and there's a half a, an ohm of contact resistance, 
you're only going to drop a half a bolt across that key switch. And uh, that's about what I was seeing, a little more. So who, I never measured the current draw of the tractor with the key in the on position. But yeah, if I were to have ventured a guess, it's probably pretty close. To, I would have guessed an amp. Now then, what about when the tractor's um, drawing current? You've got the headlights on, the tail lights are lit. Um, the um, the time delay module in it's energized. The ignition coil's energized. All the stuff's on. Let's say it's even running. Now then, let's say there's seven amps of current flowing through those contacts. What's the voltage drop across the contacts? E equals IR. E equals seven times a half. E equals three and a half volts now. Now my reading here is going to be three and a half volts low. Not a half a volt, three and a half volts. Because of um, the voltage drop being equal to the current times the resistance, you know? And look down here, guys. Let's say the generator output of that tractor is 14.8 volts. In a running condition, there's 7 amps of current flowing through that key switch. Subtract the 3.5 volts. What will I see on my voltmeter with a half, with only half an ohm of contact resistance? With this beast running, I'll only see a voltage of 11.3 volts. And I'm, I'm using these voltage readings over here as an example. But my example is pretty close to the um, reality of what was happening, okay? Um, when the key turned on, but nothing operating, again, um, I call this a 12-volt battery, right? The battery voltage is about 12.8 volts, and I was seeing about 12.1 volts on my digital meter that I glued to the hood. <laughs> so... I just thought I'd uh, talk about that. Now I want to show you something else. Hang on. I pause you. Okay, guys. I'm talking about dislikes on my videos. Oh, man, I had to laugh. Um, the one I did about the, about, oh, what did I call them? The Pretty Boys of Biomed at that one in service school, at the Puritan Bennett School. And... <laughs> I got a little passionate, I noticed, and uh, ended up growling Pretty Boy Go Home a couple times. I think I've growled Pretty Boy Go Home before you kill people. <laughs> and um, I gathered a bit of dislike, and uh, to be expected, because I'm sure one of the... Oh, here we go again. I'm sure... <laughs> should I? Should I, man? <clears throat> Boy, these are the moments, man. Yes, I shall. I'm sure that those dislikes came from engineer types. They were themselves the suits at a service school, politicking and networking on breaks instead of stuffing their face with juice, coffee, and donuts. <laughs> and uh, my disdain for engineers comes from my first biomed shop. We had six techs. Put up with my babble a minute. Hang on, damn it. We had six technicians. We were all incredibly capable, smart people, man. Especially one guy. I'm going to even say his name. Ed Gassel. Ed Gassel was a top-notch uh, designer of electrical circuitry. He was into high-speed photography, and he designed and built all his trigger circuitry. So, uh, anyway, I digress. Our engineer, Jan, we'll call her, since that was her name, Jan. Her daddy was the vice president of Kodak Corporation, I think in Ithaca. Jan lived in Ithaca, New York. She was a redhead. She was fresh out of college with a, a an EE degree and uh, smoking hot, man. Problem was... We were all very capable engineers, and she couldn't design, literally, 
a circuit with a battery, a light bulb, and a switch and make it work. And she for damn sure couldn't take a transistor and bias it and make it amplify. I used to ask a question of people we were interviewing for an, uh, an opening. My question was, here are these parts. This is what you get, man. You get wire, hookup wire, all you want. You get a 9-volt battery. You get two NPN transistors. And you get a light bulb. And my light bulb wasn't an LED. Come on, damn it. <laughs> Whoops, there we go again. My light bulb was, in my example, an automotive tail light. It draws two amps. And my question I posed was, you get a 9-volt battery, all the hookup wire you want, a light bulb, and two NPN transistors, type 2N2222. Draw a schematic of a circuit that you can touch and turn the light bulb on. You can touch. I want you to be able to touch two bare wires and turn that light bulb on. Draw me a schematic. If they couldn't, then I'd pass on them as a biomedical engineer. They didn't know enough about basic electronics. What you have here, it's called a Darlington pair. You have one transistor's gain driving the base of another transistor directly. It's called a Darlington pair. You can buy Darlington pairs in a single package. Looks just like a single transistor but it's um, a Darlington pair in there. You can use two um, discrete transistors, do the same. And here's your light bulb, and here's the two bare wires exposed. You touch those with your finger, that light bulb turns on. I'll show you why. Oh, I hope this phone doesn't fall. <laughs> Even though it's the Hilda Beast phone. I'll, uh, I'll show you a screenshot of the Hildebeest phone screen at the end of the video. So what you got happening here, guys? HFE is DC gain. It's a figure, a, a, a figure of merit of that transistor. Typically, an NPM garden variety junk box transistor, you'll see a, a DC gain of 250 or better. Um, the overall gain of a Darlington pair is the HFV, the DC gain of one, multiplied by the HFV, or DC gain of the other. And in this case, if both transistors had a gain of about 250, you'd have an overall gain of that pair of 62,500. Now I'm going to tip you back up again. Let's look at... Uh, how much current it needs to turn that light bulb on. Lamp current. Oh, shit. Wow. Nice video, Charlie. Lamp current. Two amps. Divide two amps by 62,500, you get 0 .003 milliamps. That's three microamps. All you need to flow through your finger is three microamps of current, and that light comes on full brightness. The transistors go full on. Okay. <laughs> you know, and that's all I have. I'm, I pause. Oh, you want to see some? I pause you. Look at that, man. Isn't that a hoot? Your Uncle Blozo busted out his tripod. I gotta hate doing that. <laughs> I'm just joking. So... My next video is going to be, I want to talk about my last one. I want to talk about uh, the item worth more than gold, the only item of value video, because someone disliked that too. And it, honestly, I can't figure out why. Dislikes, do they bother me? Of course, I'm human, man. Usually they're expected. Sometimes they'll... I'll get a I'll get a strong dislike. I'll get a strong negative reaction to my vi a video I did, and it's time when that happens. I just need to do some thinking about it over the course of the next couple of days. Try to figure out what did I do that was so unliked or so offensive? Because you know, 
It's a pretty off-the-cuff channel, man. The likelihood of me offending people is fair, although I don't intend to. I never do. You know? And, um, so... Yeah, so anyway, but that... And this is a trip. The person that disliked it then later undid his, his thumbs down. And I appreciate that. If it's one of you guys watching this, that's cool. But you don't have to. Um, because, you know, a dislike is what it is. It's a learning lesson for me. Not to sound all co op -y and <laughs> You know, we're not going to have uh, any trust-building exercises here at Blozo Farms with, 